And we will start uh, with our first panelist, Ms. Hannah Azule. Over to you. And I would ask the panelists, we have five minutes each, and uh, um, I'm sitting next to Ambassador, he will help me to diplomatically. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ms. Hannah, over to you. Good day. Well, as you already heard, my name is Hannah Zulaistari, and I'm the first generation of an educated woman in my family. I'm excited to be standing here before you. It is a great honor and privilege, and also a great responsibility to be given the opportunity to raise uh, the critical and important issue of female child marriage and to put it on the international agenda. For that, I would like to thank the State of Israel, the Israeli delegation, Minister Posko, our ambassador to the United Nations. Thank you, and to Mr. Roth. I didn't know it's going to be there, so... This year, Orange People, a movie that I wrote and directed, came out. The movie deals with mothers' daughters' relationships in the migrant society of modern days Israel. As you can guess, this is not an easy topic. Specifically, what shapes these relationships is the intergenerational transference of the trauma of marriage, pregnancy, and giving birth of a 12 years old girl somewhere in the Moroccan Atlas mountains. I've edited a 10 minute piece of my movie for this committee in order to illustrate, even if, if, if only partly, this horrible situation and its consequences. After the screening, I would like to say thank you. I would like first to share with you some autobiographical details about my family and myself. What? Ah, now you hear me? Okay. I would like first to share with you some of the autobiographical details about my family and myself. My mother was born in a small village in the Atlas Mountains. She got married, divorced, moved to the big city of Casablanca where she met my father and started our family with him. Together, they immigrated to Israel, where I was born. Being Zionist Jews, my parents were happy to live in Israel, but adjustment was hard. My father was an educated man, but his culture was Arabic. And my mother was highly intelligent, but she never got the right for education and therefore she was illiterate. The cultural gap between the European culture of modern day Israel and their own culture was immense. Raised and educated in the new culture, I erased my Jewish Arabic identity and I never showed an interest in their past. It came with a terrible personal price, which then became the focal theme in all my work as an arti artist and as a social activist. I took it on myself to make present and equal the voice of the generation of my parents. Another movie I made called Shmuel, which told the story of how my family dealt with their migration to Israel, saw so success, and I was invited to many, many film festivals around the world. Among them, uh, the, the, the movie festival of the charming city of Tangier in Morocco. Nothing could prepare me of, to what I felt on my arrival. I've never been to Morocco until then, but I felt like I was born there. I got connected to the people, the views, the gestures, the language. I felt that my body and soul could remember the past experiences of my mother, grandmother, and ancestors. For the first time in my life, I could understand what the great psychologist Carl Jung defined as collective memory. Upon my arrival to Israel, I decided to write about the impact that this collective memory had on my personality. In order to do so, I had to, to ask my mother about her childhood in the Atlas Mountains. I was amazed by her story. It's not that I didn't hear it before, but I never really listened. All I remembered was that from time to time, she sat alone in the kitchen crying, saying to herself, 
Find me, Tati Ali, find me, Tati Ali. Where is my little daughter, where is my little child? The story that you've just witnessed in the movie is my mother's story, only much, 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 much more sadder. In reality, she married her first husband when she was about 12 years old, and she gave him three children. He divorced her one day, took her children from her, and sent her away from his home. Later, she found out that all three have died due to neglect. <laughs> she was 80 years of age when she told me this story, but she cried as if it happened the day before. And when I asked her why did she agree to be wed at the age of 12, she looked at me with an, an amazement and said, Masoda, my sister, your auntie, was wed at the age of nine. <laughs> she treated herself the same way that others have treated her, like an object transferred from one owner to another. The result, as you can see here now, it was tragic. This moment between us made me realize my mother's amazingly passive state of mind, a state of mind which was passed to me through our collective memory. There's of course no comparison between her state of mind and, and my state of mind. It reminded me, but some of it, uh, I think some of it stayed with me in a way. It reminded me of the moments of my life when I chose to be passive and let others decide my, my destiny, just like my mother in the past. But I had no reason for that. I had all the conditions to say, to stand up and say, this is how, how I want it and this is how I don't want it, thanks to education. This moment took place so many years ago, but here I am now, today, standing before you because I want to make a change. The scene in the movie that you've just saw where the girl abandons her baby and moves to the big city did not take place in reality. It was written by me for two reasons. The first, in order to tell the world what happens to a child that gives birth a child and loses her childhood and how this, is, this trauma affects the next generation. And the second, in order to amend the collective memory that I share with my mother and to give her and to myself the power to stand up and do something to change her destiny in retrospect. This is the healing power of art. But not everyone has the chance to change their consciousness the same way I did. There are millions of women all around the world that carry with them the collective memory of being treated like an object that was passed on them from their great-grandparent. But don't get me wrong, it did not happen only in Rome. The same is true for women from Europe and America, much like for women as in Asia and Africa, from all states, all cultures. From some, it goes generations back, like me, and for others, 10 generations back. We all carry with us the collective memory of our ancient mothers of being an object. But the most terrible thing is that even today, Millions of girls are all around the world at the age of 8, 9, and 13 years old, sold as an object to men who can do with them anything that comes to their minds. These girls are getting pregnant, and their body cannot hold the weight of the birth baby. Their body is deformed, their pelvis is broken, and they become crippled and terrified for the rest of their lives. Then. They think into heavy depression or just simply die. And the world is being filled with talented but passive and sad women. I stand here before you today and ask you, or better say, demand that you take an action. You have the power to redefine the horrible act that is now being whitewashed as child marriage. The act of marriage is an act of mutual consent between two adults. But when 10 years old minor who doesn't even know what it means to have sexual intercourse is being sold as in, in exchange for a cow or a jeep, this is not marriage. When a 12 years old girl who does not understand why she has to lay under an old man who hurts her instead of playing catch with her friends, this is not marriage. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, millions of girls 
this is, when all of this is taking action, this place is taking, so I'm sorry, I'm just too excited about this horrible situation. When all this is taking place, this is not child marriage. This is child rape. Do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah. 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 Millions of girls all around the world are being raped every day and the world keeps silent. <coughs> Dr. Vicky Shiran, uh, a woman of a color, an outstanding Israeli feminist, has told me that a feminist woman is a woman that rubble against her destiny, that understands <coughs> that her low social status is not a result of her horrible personality or her tough luck, but rather from her low social positioning of her full political power. But she will be able to rebel against her destiny and be freed from oppression, mainly if she could, she, she could see that she is not alone. This, is, this committee has to show women that they don't have to rebel on their own any longer. Therefore, the committee has to push every state to legislate two laws. The first, that every girl around the world must receive general education, just general education, but then to be educated to independence and assertiveness so that they could be, so that they could rebel against their oppressive destiny. And the second, to forbid female child marriage and to define it as rape. This committee has to do all that in its power to make sure that every state upholds this Trivia and just close. Thank you.